Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we're at our local HEB. Just picked Joel up from the airport and uh, we're getting ready to head out to our spot. Did you get it? There we go. Five days nice. <laughs> <laughs> so we just got a little bit of groceries and we're headed to the hunting spot. It's, it looks perfect. It's definitely uh, definitely open. We got a good breeze though today. And I think the pigs are gonna be out and about. So I'm in Texas with my buddy Cole from the YouTube channel Flatlander. He's been in a previous video of mine um, in Florida. And uh, he is, I'm in his home state, Texas. He's taking me pig hunting. Gonna go see if we can find some wild boar on this public land. And uh, hoping to be able to fly back to Oregon with a bunch of meat. So this right here is an Osage orange tree. This wood is prized for high quality bow stave making. So making a traditional bow out of Osage orange, this is a great wood. Very hard to find straight trunks, so it requires a fair amount of skill in order to, to work with making the stave. But I was just looking at this thinking that this little section right here, which is pretty straight, would be quite a nice, nice stave. But yeah, Native Americans used to prize this wood and we still do. bottom of this creek bed you can see it's kind of got that nice deep dark brown color here's another piece right here and this is what the natives used to use to make arrowheads and knives it's perfect stuff right here in the bottom of the creek bed Cole was telling me that he's, he's found arrowheads all over this place just walking around in the bottom of the creek bed so the natives must have come over here to harvest some of the stone which back then was like gold i mean they made their knives the arrowheads it was how they would feed themselves so it's pretty cool to come and experience that groups of pigs but couldn't get much on film um, we'll be back at it first thing in the morning though morning y'all we're gonna park the canoe right up here in just a little bit and uh, we're gonna get out and do a little hiking all right y'all I haven't been filming much I've been kind of aggravated there's just <laughs> freaking people everywhere um, we went in the canoe this morning and passed a, I don't know, there was a 
huge group of guys that have been camping out here for several days, having a drunk fest, going around, screwing up all the, all the good spots. Um, so we're back where we were yesterday, where we saw those pigs. And uh, we're gonna hit this one more time. And if we don't have any luck here, then we're, we're gonna go to a completely different part, uh, head north to another little piece of public land that I know about. I think we're completely gonna change locations. We're gonna drive about two and a half hours or so and go somewhere where I know there's not gonna be any people, so. We got ourselves a real life hobo camp. We're using a tire to hold up the pot <laughs> and we're literally underneath a bridge that's been spray painted. I mean, we're out in the in the freaking sticks here, but this is a like a, a kind of a country road that we've just pulled up to and uh, creek down there which you might or might not be able to hear we're just camping by the van tonight and then tomorrow we'll jump in the canoes probably and head down the river all right y'all we're trying something different we're at another little piece of public this is a little narrow slot public land we're looking for some pigs just got permission from the uh, farmer or from the rancher that if we happen to shoot something that goes on his property, just go get it. Every square inch has a hoof print. <laughs> Every square inch. It's like a herd of wildebeest have just roamed through this area. If, there is no possible way you can hope to find better pig sign than this. Just so y'all know. Just in case we got into a good situation, I brought the 12 gauge with some double up buck. That way we can make sure we put these pigs down. We have to kill them in the riverbed. Although I do have permission to be on this property right here. Look at this. I mean, they're just, look at this. The, I mean, the pigs have been in here so heavy. Ridiculous. All right, y'all, me and Joel, we're just sitting here talking, bouncing ideas off of each other. And uh, Joel was like, we need to, this is just gonna be a river expedition, period. We found a little shallow, shallow river, which will require a little bit of getting out and walking the, the canoe through in some shallow sections. But who knows how far this thing goes? So this could be an adventure. We just chuck all our shit in the canoe, Yep. go and if there's pigs that come down we've got pigs to, to shoot at there's we've seen some big fish yeah i mean there's it, it'll be an adventure to keep on going and see how far we can go it's got everything we need it's got everything we need a yeah. lot of pig sign yeah i know i know <laughs> it's a lot of gear and i don't usually bring this much gear but um, the purpose is to really bring as much meat out as we can, so I'm gonna be doing it this time. Here we go. <laughs> the water is pretty shallow, but we're actually making pretty good headway. Uh, yes, uh, Flatlander, to the starboard side, please, sir. A little bit more to the port. A little faster, please. <laughs> All right, y'all. Morning of day three. We're headed in. All right, y'all, we're gonna set up camp. We found us a good little spot on this, uh, where there's not too much pig sign. Uh, I'm gonna set up a little taller up on the hill so that if we happen to hear some pigs um, over here on the this side that we're allowed to, uh, to shoot on, then uh, we can make a move, so. I like sleeping on the floor, so I'm going to set up a tarp and a ground mat and my sleeping bag on the floor. Cole's going to set up a hammock. He does have an insulated uh, mat that goes inside the, uh, the hammock for really cold nights. Um, and then, of course, a tarp um, to shelter him from the rain. These are great setups um, and really depends on preference. 
There we go. There's camp. Simple, but yet comfortable. Now that is the direction that we're gonna jump in the canoe and go exploring with adult gear. See if we can slowly drift down the river and uh, sneak up on some pigs. They won't be expecting to be, uh, they won't ex be expecting any threat from the water, so. Did you see the way it was? Did you see the way it was pinged into the ground? Pinged down, yeah. Yeah. I think the fetching might have bounced off the underneath side of the log. Yeah. And then, because I, I, I wasn't aiming too low, but you can never guarantee you're going to do a perfect shot. You For sure. Do best, but... Yeah. Because they're pretty weary little animals. Just to see how the pigs here really have no pressure. No. Dude, that, that white and black one was beautiful. Oh, dude, yeah, we're gonna see, we're gonna see some more. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I told you, I was like, I feel like I'm hearing something, dude. Something was telling me like, you need to look right here, there's gotta be something. We're on to them now. Yeah.
It was a good shot. I'm happy with that shot. It was a, definitely a lung shot, so. Joel, when she popped out, I mean, she was five yards at least, or less. That was like less than a 10 yard. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, I was like, Joel, right? You were like, it's too small. It's a big, I was like, no, further to the left. She looked at me and I'm like, yeah, I'm not shooting. And then she just put her head down and turned yeah. the and The wind was right in our face, dude. It's such good, like right in our favor. I just shot my first pig. <laughs> so there's some blood and you can see this ball. That's the trail right there. I'm not convinced that it was an amazing, I'm not convinced it was a hot shot, but I'm pretty certain it was a lung shot, so. It might take her a little while to die, so we're gonna maybe just give it a few minutes and then we'll start, we'll start trailing. Hopefully she hasn't gone onto uh, private property. <laughs> Thank you, Lan. Good job, good dude. Good job, <laughs> dude. Yeah, dude. Let's see all the foaming blood. Oh, thank you for your life. Good job, man. I know they're a feral animal, but it's still life. For sure. Oh, it's the beauty of hunting. It's the only thing I know of where you can feel two emotions at the same time. Yeah. What's going on, Joel? The hard part. <laughs> <laughs> Not so bad, but look at this tough ass hide, man. Look at that. Check this out. This is where, this is what you want right here. I mean, it's just, it's not a, not a lean animal. Oh. There's so much fat. Uh, we've got two hind legs off, one front leg, and now do the back strap and then go finish off the, the leg on the other side. Um, probably take some ribs too for barbecue and, you know, take everything we can use, but. Mm -hmm. uh, this is good eating. Lays it right off. She's a good sized pig. She's gonna have a pretty good ridge that runs down her back there. It looks like those piglets kind of sucked the sucked quite of her meat down. Yeah. That's what children do to the parents. <laughs> yeah. <Sucking> I know. <laughs> yeah. That's hilarious. All right, I'm gonna get back to holding this thing for him so we can get it knocked out. Another second longer and she would have had that arrow in her. Y'all, we're packing meat. What an epic friggin' afternoon, man. It should be a good, good next two days, I hope, if we can continue to have days like this. So, day two of public land pig hunt, out. Um, I shot the pig yesterday afternoon and we had opportunity to shoot a lot more, but we lost daylight. So um, hopefully that'll be different today. If we can get two more pigs, that'll be amazing. Um, we're 
know they're here. We know where to go and find them. So uh, it's, it's good. It's good. At times when I'm not doing a voiceover, you'll notice my voice probably gets a little softer and a little calmer. Like right now, you know, in times like these where we've got this damn virus to, to deal with, getting out into nature is always, always healing spiritual it's my church makes me calm makes me happy and uh, for those of you that might be watching this that uh don't spend enough time out in it please do just get out there it's amazing just uh the smells it's the animal sounds it all just um i believe i it, it heals puts us in a more, a more natural, calm state where we want to be as human beings. I don't feel that we want to be bombarded with unnatural sounds, electronics, overstimulation, multitasking. I don't think that's good for us. Lunchtime here on the river. About to have some deer sausage and then uh, I think we're gonna go back out. And this is why these pigs are so fatty and so tasty. Because they get to eat pe pecans. Like this is, their, <laughs> this is their diet. It is a big, big yeah. part of their diet. I mean, they're little guys, you know. They're little little dry but then, they're still good because they're yeah they weren't on the ground yeah it's something we all used to do right crack them open avoid avoid the center center stuff and the stuff on the outside because that's real sour and you just pull the nut out but i mean no one does that anymore everyone buys that already pre-done in a package yeah oh yeah it is so good Talk about a survival food, man. It's crazy how sweet Protein, they are, too. Fat, real yeah. sweet. Yeah, no wonder these pigs, I mean, yeah. they've got bedding, they've got food, they've got water, um, and really no pressure. So why wouldn't they thrive down here? I like Texas. <laughs> <laughs> I like Texas. Definitely gets the big old check in my box. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. We're about to head out. We got the canoe loaded. We are decided we're gonna go full primitive, bows only, <laughs> no shoes, canoe, <laughs> on the river. We got two more pigs we need to kill, y'all. And we're so close. Sorry, I gotta clean you off here. Um, we know we're in the right area. So it's just, uh, we've given it all day. It's been good and hot and we're ready. Come with us.
what? Look at what I just found. I mean, that's more like a spearhead than an arrowhead. Look yeah. at the size of that. Yeah. I mean, you figure it's probably yeah, that yeah. long. That's just <clears throat> like a spearhead. Yeah. Because that's an adult dart. Typically, where they do these two notches, they lash it. The middle part, it just gets lashed. So yeah. the shaft would be the same diameter. Roughly. Thumb thickness. Yeah. That's an atlatl or a spear. That's right. It's not an arrow. No. No. Wow. The first one I've ever found. Yeah. Wow, dude. <laughs> That's a dandy too, son. I mean. A... Have you ever found one as big as this? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the beauty of it is trying to wonder how this here we are in this modern day trying to do the same thing the same thing with steel and with nylon and with all these different materials yeah dude that is amazing <laughs> if that ain't a good omen i don't know what is yeah for sure we asked for the man's blessing earlier <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's money right there right here where you harvested your pig Joel shot her right up there on the hill. That is awesome. Super cool. morning so last night after eating dinner we hear some squealing up in the in the woods just above where we're camping and so it's uh it's it's dark a real dark night because there's no moon and uh, picked up the shotgun ran up there and we ended up getting a big old bull um, so check it out can hunt pigs here at night and um I uh, don't want to shoot them at night with a bow. I just don't feel that um, I can do it very effectively, effectively at night. So, see, we gutted them out. We, um, fortunately, with the gutting, I mean, it's at night, we were so tired, burst the bladder, so I ended up cutting off both of the back legs so it wouldn't contaminate the meat. Um, we've already taken, taken the back straps, which nice old back straps in there. And then we got to start working on the front legs, but yeah, we it was amazing. Um, I've never, definitely never shot a pig with a shotgun, and we used the um, we used I think double lot buckshot, and it was, I mean, this thing dropped dropped like a stone. It was a very clean kill, um, and this is the first boar. There's definitely a difference in the smell of the meat. A little more musky, a little more like a domestic pig smell. Um, but that's, you know, that's easy to work around with depending on how you cook it. So. He went out this morning. I'm a little pissed off, I'll be honest with you, because I didn't get to film it. He went out this morning and harvested him another pig. Perfect, perfect heart shot.
very, very happy with that. I get to take a lot of meat home. So, uh, very successful trip, and I'm very grateful for what the land's given me here. So this is what every bow hunter hopes for, is a, a hot shot. You can see right there. That's where my broadhead sliced right through the heart. And you can see the heart's not really substantially big and it's tucked in behind, right behind that shoulder blade. So you kind of, you really got to have your placement good. And I, I got, you know, very, have, I was very fortunate with this shot to get a very good placement. And that's why I died less than two feet from where I, where I shot it. So if only every shot could be like this, <laughs> yep. it would be really great to see humane kills like this. But it just makes me glad that the animal didn't didn't suffer much and that I got the arrow right where I wanted it to be. It doesn't happen every time. <laughs> so I thought I'd show you that. That's a pretty cool thing. So we are loaded up. Three pigs. We get the canoe all uh, packed up. And we're ready to head out of here and start deboning and freezing some meat. Successful trip. <laughs> my brother Cole Flatlander yeah, you guys I mentioned it before go and watch Flatlander if you A are an experienced hunter B not an experienced hunter or C just really interested in watching good content and a great guy go check out the Flatlander channel um, as you can see I mean I've come into his neck of the woods and been very successful and uh, a lot of it's due to his knowledge and um, he's he's the best hunter I know. I uh, feel very grateful to learn from him and you guys should be too um, through his channel. So please support him um, and there will be more videos to come of both of us together. So stay tuned to my channel and his channel. We've got, uh, got the canoe loaded down. Joel, anything you want to tell everybody? There ain't no smoke and mirrors when it comes to Cole Wilkes. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's a real deal. I mean, you know, you you watch him on on uh, on the videos, and you you know, obviously, you can pick up that he knows what he's doing. But being here in person, actually hunting with him, it's uh, I feel very grateful to have that opportunity because he's uh, he's so good at what he does. So you need to support him. Thanks, dude. Of course, brother. Good You're job. The You're the man. <laughs> I'll pass it off to you. I'm trying not nose dive, eh? Yeah, I don't want it to flip. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. It's not exactly the best canoeing river, but it sure hauls our gear good. No. All right, to so check it out. This cooler is, what is it? A 70... So 45 liters, which is 48 quarts. Okay, this is kind of, there's my hand, size of the cooler. This thing, <laughs> it's so funny. Three pigs have literally, I mean, obviously deboned, um, packaged, um, literally came to the top. So I don't know, but I think there's about 80 pounds in there. And we've just put them in the freezer now to freeze overnight. I fly out tomorrow, so. Tomorrow I'll take all these frozen pieces, we'll just fill up the cooler and then duct tape the thing closed and I'm going to put it as checked in baggage. So we'll see how it all turns out, but yeah, it's uh, there's a lot of meat. So uh, going to be a first time for me to see how that turns out. <laughs>